in this video how the greatest doctors in the world are treating kidney disease. Catherine here, I've been working with people suffering from kidney disease for more than 10 years now and I can tell you that in the last few years there have been huge steps forward in the way kidney disease is treated. Today we are going to see who made those changes possible. We are going to see a doctor in Minnesota who is administering messing chemical stem cells to patients to make them gain back their kidney function significantly. We are going to see how a doctor is saving people from dialysis with a natural resin. And we are also going to learn about the last news about the development of the bioartificial kidney. And more! Now, this video is not just going to be about how these outstanding figures are shaping history of medicine, but also about what we can learn from these luminaries. What we can use to lower our creatinine levels. So let's start with a professor and researcher from Colorado who is treating kidney disease with stem cells. Stephen C. Textor, MD, is actually giving new hope to the patients that need it the most. In a study published in 2019 on the Kidney International, 21 patients who were administered messing chemical stem cells derived from their own fat were able to have a significant improvement in kidney function. During this trial, 21 patients were able to improve their GFR, main indicator of kidney function, on average from 53 to 56. And also to decrease their systolic blood pressure from 124 to 136 millimeters of mercury. Yes, all that with a single stem cell injection. Which represents a huge success because this research was focused on patients suffering from CKD and atherosclerotic renovascular disease or ARVD. This is a common condition in patients suffering from kidney disease and heart disease. It's a condition in which an artery that brings blood to the kidneys is shutting down due to plaque buildup, decreasing blood flow to the kidneys and kidney function. And just thanks to stem cells, researchers were actually able to increase blood flow, decrease inflammation and improve GFR in those suffering from CKD and ARVD. Incredible! Question. How does this work? This procedure is not as complicated as it appears to be. Researchers first harvest and cultivate a little bit of stem cells from the patient's own belly fat. And since the stem cells are coming from the patient's own body, there is no risk of rejection. In the lab, they separate out the tissue's stem cells and enhance their ability to promote kidney function during a six-week process. Researchers grow the stem cells into the amount needed for treatment, and then they just inject them into the patient's kidney. Yes, it's amazing that this is no more just a theory. They have actually done this and documented the results. Also, thanks to Dr. Stephen C. Textor, a real pioneer in the field of stem cells. I bet we will hear more about this treatment in the future. Let's talk about now the inventor of a treatment that's already available for anyone with kidney disease and that probably some of you guys are already using because, well, it works and it's very simple to use. I'm talking about Amir Al Musawi, the inventor of acacia fiber as a form of intestinal dialysis. Acacia fiber, which is in my opinion one of the best ways to help your kidneys, has a very surprising history. And its history is tied to that of a researcher called Amir Al Mosawi. Today, he is the head doctor of Iraq headquarters of Copernicus Scientists International Panel. But it was the year 2003 when he demonstrated that Acacia fiber, which is simply the substance that acacia trees produce naturally from their bark, could be used as an alternative to dialysis in people with end-stage renal failure. I mean, imagine how shocking 
that discovery must have been. We are talking about something that literally grows on trees here and that can be used to do what a dialysis machine does. Because, you see, acacia fiber was firstly used in an end-stage renal disease patient who wasn't able to tolerate dialysis. And keep in mind that their GFR was less than 5. Most patients are told to start dialysis with a GFR of 13 to 15. But instead of dialysis, they were given 1 gram of acacia fiber per kilograms of body weight per day. The result was shocking. The patient was able to go on for four years without dialysis and without any uremic symptoms at all. After that, Amir al Musawi wrote and published several papers about this method of intestinal dialysis. The last one was actually published in 2019 and involved this time nine patients. All of them were in need of dialysis and all of them were treated with acacia fiber instead. Yes, they were able to avoid dialysis for years. Now guys, I've made a full video about acacia fiber because this is actually a supplement that can be used to help in any stage of CKD. My video is up here and also down in the description. But don't go away yet. Up next, we will talk about one of the greatest innovators of our times, a man that is trying to make dialysis a thing of the past. I'm talking about Dr. Shuva Roy, the leader of the Kidney Project, the team that's developing the bioartificial kidney. Now, Shuva Roy, PhD, is a translational bioengineer and professor of bioengineering at the University of California, San Francisco. Along with William Fissel, MD, he is leading the development of what's, in my opinion, one of the greatest innovations of our times, the bioartificial kidney. What is the bioartificial kidney and how is it going to change the lives of millions of patients? The bioartificial kidney is an implantable organ made both from human tissue and artificial parts that it's going to be able to perform the function of a human kidney. It will only be powered by the human body and it will guarantee that the patient will stay dialysis free on the long term. It has two big advantages over a kidney transplant. First of all, it will solve the biggest problem connected to kidney transplants organ availability. Today, a transplant receiver has to wait on average five years before they can get a kidney for transplant, if they can get on the list at all. The artificial kidney is going to change that forever in the near future, and those who will receive it will not need to take medicines to prevent rejection for the rest of their lives, like transplant receivers do. By the way, this is the real finished product that's already being tested in pigs. So what's new about the artificial kidney? Today the kidney project is in the preclinical development stage of the bioartificial kidney, which means they have prototypes that actually work and that operated as intended in healthy pigs. What they are trying to achieve now is to improve the capacity of the device of filtering the blood. They are trying to make it powerful enough, in short, to replace a human kidney. And well, a while ago, Dr. Shuva Roy told us that they needed $10 million in three to four years to complete this process and start testing the device on humans. Recently, they were able to secure $1 million thanks to an organization called Kidney X. This will sure make the goal of testing the artificial kidney on human closer, maybe in 2026 already. Up next, the work of one of the greatest exponents of the world of naturopathic medicine, a doctor who developed a three-step dietary strategy to treat kidney disease. Dr. Joseph Pizzorno, founder of Bastyr University. Dr. Joseph Pizzorno, founder of Bastyr University, is one of the most respected naturopaths in the world. He specialized in treating kidney disease patients with a natural approach and his work helped thousands of patients all over the world. What he developed is one of the most complete and most trustworthy eating strategies to reverse kidney disease you can find. So question, if you could be getting an appointment with Dr. Pizzorno today, what would he recommend to protect your kidneys? Dr. Pizzorno developed a three-step dietary and naturopathic strategy to treat kidney disease. It's based on the notion that the kidneys are 
the first line defense of the body against toxins. And the excess of toxins modern society put us in contact with is actually damaging the kidneys. So first of all, a patient of Dr. Pisorno will be told to aggressively reduce the exposure to nephrotoxins such as cadmium for example. This is a heavy metal that's mostly present in polluted air and in pesticides used on produce. The second step will be aimed at protecting the kidneys from oxidative stress. The kidneys progressively lose function with aging and oxidative stress is what actually causes aging in the human body. Then he will focus on increasing microcirculation in the kidneys, which coincidentally is the same goal Dr. Stephen C. Texer achieved with stem cells therapy. Dr. Pizzorno, however, believes that this can also be achieved with a natural treatment with certain foods and supplements. Now guys, Dr. Pizzorno's strategy is very interesting in my opinion and I've made a full video about the foods and supplements he believes have the most powerful properties to protect the kidneys. This video up here and also down in the description if you want to watch. And we still have to see one of the greatest doctors of our times. This is maybe the most important name today because he changed for the better the lives of so many patients. His name is Carmelo Giordano and he is considered a giant in nephrology. If you have been following me here regularly, you probably already know that today a low protein diet is the cornerstone of the treatment for CKD, but it was only in 2021 that the low protein diet or LPD in short became part of the KDOQI guideline. This is the rule book that all doctors must follow when dealing with CKD patients because medical literature confirmed that a LPD can be a way to greatly slow down or even stop GFR decline in people with CKD. And guys, do you know who invented this diet? an Italian luminary, Dr. Carmelo Giordano. He was born in Naples in 1930 and he received his doctorate cum laude in 1954. And it was in 1963 when he firstly published about the low protein diet. But it wasn't called a low protein diet back then. It was called the Giordano Giovannetti diet from the names of the two main researchers behind this diet. And well, this is incredible. They were able to prove already in the 60s that patients in the terminal stage of CAD were able to suffer from less symptoms when following a LPD. As we can see here, those following a Giordano Giovannetti diet didn't have any nausea, anorexia, vomiting or diarrhea. In comparison, all the test subjects not following this diet had one or more of these symptoms. Again, this was published in 1963 and CKD patients in Italy have been following a diet similar to this for the last decades thanks to Dr. Giordano's work. Well, today we know a lot more about this diet even if for some patients and even doctors, unfortunately, this is still something new. Now guys, if you want to learn more about how you could benefit from a LPD from a practical point of view, I recently made a full video about it. It's up here and also down in the description. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all.